I'm essentially riding motorcycles for free. Oh look, a wallet, hold on. Look at this. I'm gonna go try to turn this in. What is going on fam? Today I'm gonna show you guys how to make money buying and selling motorcycles. But first, I have a crap ton of these and it's time I put it on the RSV4. Even the Suron has one. I don't know why I haven't put this on this bike yet. Probably because I thought I was gonna sell it. Let's go ahead and christen the bike. I think I'm gonna put it right in there. Bam, there it is. A lot of you guys are wondering what putang ina means. It just means have a great day in Tagalog. Ooh, what is going on fam? Welcome back to another episode of Riding and Talking. I'm your host, Adobo Nocity. It's a really, really nice Friday. It's awesome. I love it. And today we're going to be talking about how you can make money buying and selling used motorcycles. Let's go! The most obvious thing is to buy low and sell high. Now, that is easier said than done. If you're an entrepreneur, you're probably really good at the art of negotiation. But if you're a young person trying to get started out in motorcycle riding, you may be really, really shitty and negotiating motorcycle prices. You're gonna start off with some cash, start off with a budget. You can do this at any level, whether you're starting with a $20,000 budget or a $2,000 budget. If you're new to motorcycle riding, you've probably been saving up some money to buy your first motorcycle. But what you may not know is you can actually make money or ride motorcycles for free by buying them low and selling them high. How do we do that? Step one, you gotta make a ton of low ball offers. That's just how it is. The easiest way to win a low ball offer is if you know the person selling the motorcycle. If it's your friend, it's your aunt, your uncle, whoever it is, they are more likely to give you a really, really great deal on a motorcycle than somebody that you don't know. So if you know somebody that's selling a motorcycle or might want to sell a motorcycle, I would start there. But you'll be able to get a really good deal on it and then ride it for a year, learn what you need to do, and then turn around and sell it either for what you got it for or a little bit more than what you got it for. All of a sudden, you're in the green. Now what if you're negotiating with somebody that you don't know? Pretty simple. The first thing you do is use the internet. Send some messages, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, maybe even OfferUp. Hit up some local motorcycle riding Facebook groups. A lot of these Facebook groups have a buy and sell page and it's not gonna hurt to DM them and lowball them. It's okay. A lot of these people are probably gonna get offended and call you an idiot. Who cares? But there's always gonna be somebody desperate enough to either let it go or negotiate below their asking price. Never pay what people are asking for the motorcycles. They usually price it accordingly. If people are firm on their asking price, they're either not in a rush to sell or they're out of their freaking mind. Used motorcycles are the easiest thing to negotiate in terms of asking price. Does that mean you go to a dealership? F no. Stay away from dealerships. Personally, just stay away from dealerships, period. Unless you're financing it, then you may not have a choice. But if you're paying cash, I honestly would just stay away from any dealerships. Craigslist has a really simple feature when you're browsing their website. You click on motorcycles, click on buy owner, and in the search box, you could type in keywords like need to sell, crashed. You can get a really good deal on a crashed motorcycle and just fix it up yourself and turn around and sell it. Rebuilt titles will probably give you a really good deal. I'm not sure how much money you can actually make from a rebuilt title. Personally, it's a lot harder to sell a motorcycle with a salvage or rebuilt title. So I would stay away from those if you're trying to make some money. I've been buying and selling motorcycles for a long time and it's been a great way for me to be able to buy the bikes that I want to ride for a little bit and then turn around and sell them for profit or turn around and sell them for about the same amount of money I invested in them. I'm essentially riding motorcycles for free. Oh look, a wallet, hold on. Ugh. Look at this. I'm gonna go try to turn this in. Whosoever it is. Whew. We'll find the owner. Good Samaritan here, guys. Good Samaritan. Now, finding the right motorcycle for you is gonna be a little bit difficult. If you're not too picky about what motorcycle you get, when you find something that looks like a good deal, I would research the market. Go on to Facebook Marketplace and type in Jigsaw 600 2006 and see what other people are asking for them. Same with any other motorcycle that you think might be a good deal. Okay, here's a huge, huge tip. Do not keep your money in the bank if you're ready to buy. Keep it in cash. Cash is king. Some deals pop up on the weekends or the Sunday, your bank might not be open. You wanna have that cash ready to go. In fact, when I'm lowballing people online, I just tell them, hey, I got cash and I can buy it today. Adding that to my direct messages has been one of the most effective ways for me to get 
great deals on motorcycles. This includes my Panigale, the S1000 RR that I bought, and also the R1M that I owned in, in 2018. Funny story on that R1M, I actually got that bike for like $2,000 in profit, and I got to keep it. It's weird. If you look back at my channel, there's, there's a whole playlist of the R1M. All right, here's another strategy that might help you out in getting a good deal in person. So you're there, you showed up, you checked out the motorcycle. You know you could still negotiate down if possible. All you gotta do is look at the bike, see what it needs. If it needs a chain, sprockets, tires, you can take that off of the asking price. If the seller didn't disclose all of these things when you were negotiating online, it's okay to be like, hey, you didn't tell me about this. Can we knock off like five, six hundred bucks? Because I'm gonna have to buy this, 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 and that. A lot of the times they'll be like, yeah, because you're already there. You showed up with cash. Another thing that I do is I let them hold the cash in their hand and I'll go out for a test ride. And if they were asking for five thousand dollars, I'd let them hold forty five hundred dollars. And when I come back, I'd be like, hey man, that's forty five hundred bucks. I think that's the max amount I'm willing to spend. How's it feel in your hand? Most of the time they're not willing to give that money back and they'll say, you know what? That's fine. It's a little screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> but making money is not a pretty business, man. It is kind of sleazy. And when I put my bikes up for sale, I know who the flippers are. They'll offer me stupid, stupid, ridiculous prices. Now, here's one thing that you can do to increase the amount of money that you make. Make sure whatever motorcycle you sell, it's in really, really good condition. You can ask for more money if the motorcycle that you're trying to sell is in really, really good condition. It doesn't need a chain, tires are brand new, oil's changed, and everything is ready to go. I'm talking turnkey. The new owner doesn't have to do jack. You can stay firm on your price, or you can ask for a little bit higher price than the market. All right, let's go eat. I'm at Marisol Restaurant on Bridgeport in Lakewood. Finally getting some Filipino food. Gee whiz. <laughs> Guys, we got a little side quest. We gotta go find the owner of this wallet. Yes, I opened it. I had to. To figure out who owns it. And yes, there's a ton of money in there. <laughs> but it's bad karma. Don't keep it. Just go find the owner and return it. If that was me, I would want the same thing. So let's go you know there's not enough good in this world man i follow a lot of content creators who like give away money or like have people donate to their cause and they make content around giving and i love that man that makes me feel good like i wish i could make a living doing that but honestly like how do you even start something like that you're just like oh i'm gonna give away a hundred dollars today and then a thousand dollars in a month and then ten thousand <laughs> you know like how, how does I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, you can monetize that somehow. Golly gee whiz. It's chilly out on the highway. <laughs> Alright, this is a little hard because I don't have a phone mount. So I'm going to have to find a samurai Japanese steakhouse. And I think I know where that's at. I think it's up the way some. But uh, we'll stop there and then we'll be really close to where this person lives. Holy cannoli. Look at that! Woo! Hopefully people are okay. Car's in the ditch, man. Alright, I had to do a quick battery change, but I think we're close. I'm still having to pull out my phone, so... It's gonna be a little bit of a battle. We're gonna get this wallet back to its rightful place! Let's go! I feel like a knight right now. Sir Adobo of Tacoma. <laughs> wow, look at this brick house. Holy cannoli. Gee whiz. 
even the outside fencing is oh my god what kind of what kind of brick house is that I will huff and puff and I will blow your brick. Oh, no, I can't because it's brick. This would have been a lot easier if I just put a phone mount on. It is what it is. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to make it right here and then make another right. Oh, gosh. I got to pee so bad. Wait, I want to say it's all the way down that way. Gosh, I got to pee. Hurry up so I can go home. Gee whiz. Holy jizz. All right. Nice little neighborhood. Okay. Oh, God, I got to pee. Oh, I got to pee. Oh, I got to pee. Okay, let's see where we're at. Let's get our fucking ball bearings. It's back there. Lost in the sauce, man. I don't think anybody's gonna be home. Let's see if somebody's home. Hopefully somebody's home. Okay. Well, guess. I don't know. They'll figure it out. <laughs> There's nobody home, so <laughs> didn't think there would be. Everybody's working. Oh man. Alright, I don't even know what this video is about anymore. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something. If not, I hope it was entertaining. I'll catch you guys in the next one because I really gotta go home and pee. Alright. I can't wait. Holy shit. Ugh. Come on. Oh fuck.